In recent years, uh, you can see more and more robotics applications to be used in our daily environments. And this is a big change, you know. Because of this change, uh, it will uh, let the robotics engineers to, to think about uh, ethical and legal and social issues when they design the robotic systems. I received my PhD in law, so currently my main focus is on the interdisciplinary studies between artificial intelligence and the law. And uh, because of this, um, currently I have a project under freeze. It is called RoboLaw Asia. And for RoboLaw Asia, uh, our methodology uh, to promote uh, AI and law research is to create uh, three uh, props. The props are the first one is called RoboLaw. Uh, RoboLaw uh, discusses about uh, uh, ethical, legal, and social impacts to robotic te technologies. So it has the central focus on philosophy and the law and the social sciences. And the other problem is called uh, legal informatics. And in this, this topic, uh, my focus is on how can information technology help the legal system. The final the problem is called the social robotics. Uh, and it, it is not only focused on human and the robots interaction, but we also focus on meta issues about the designing the robot sociability. I mean that uh, for designing uh, the robot sociability, we not only a uh, technical viewpoint about the human robot interaction, but we also to think about how to design the social system. Uh, in other words, that is, how can we embed uh, social values into the design and the research of uh, robotics te technology? And this is called social robotics. In recent years, uh, you can see more and more robotics applications to be used in our daily environments. And this is a big change, you know. That's, um, the contact level of, of ro robots and humans has been changed. And the, because of this change, uh, it will uh, let the robotics engineers to, to think about uh, ethical and legal and social issues when they design the robotic systems. Is it possible to come up with a set of universal ethics for artificial intelligence and robots? Okay, uh, well, I am pessimistic about the, to seek a uh, universal the ethics for AI and the robots. Because I think uh, a huge gap is uh, uh, about the cultural difference between different societies. Um, take Japan, for example. Uh, re relatively speaking, I think Japanese uh, society are more acceptable to uh, human or the robots comparing to Western countries. And this is because of the reason of the religion. You know that uh, in Japan, they have the original religion called Shindo. And in the Shindo religion, they believe that not only humans or animals or even the stones or every stuff have its uh, own spirit, uh, spirit inside it. So it is relatively acceptable for Japanese pe people to think, OK, uh, human or the robots is a kind of a partner but not an uh, enemy or something that uh, may bring the streets to humans. And, uh, but uh, um, comparing to the Christian uh, religions, uh, there's a clear boundary uh, between human beings and uh, the synth, right? So I think uh, if we want to pursue uh, universal the ethics for AI, maybe we should overcome the, how, to, how to improve the harmonization of the cultural gap between the different societies. What do you see in the future for robotics and AI? I think for the future 10 to 20 years, the, the priority concern is the how to ensure the AI safety. So uh, on one hand, we should think about how to ensure the long-term AI safety, that is to solve the AI control problems. But on the other hand, uh, uh, another critical issue is uh, about uh, how to ensure the short-term air safety. 
and which might uh, cover the two issues. The first issue is about the safety intelligence. Uh, you know that uh, for the future the autonomous uh, machines, they will have the char characteristics like uh, embodiment, and also they might cause the open texture risk, and which are difficult uh, to be covered by the current uh, legal framework, uh, like uh, machine safety. So in the future, we should think about uh, how can we uh, ensure the safety between the human and the robot interaction to prevent the uh, physical the harmful action caused by the uh, machine's the autonomy. And the other issue is about the social security. Maybe it, it, it's a relatively uh, wide debate about the uh, AI and the unemployment. So, uh, this kind of a threat uh, is invisible, but it will gradually uh, let more and more people uh, lose their jobs. So towards this issue, uh, we should think about how can we uh, enhance the social acceptance to AI. And towards this, I think the first step the government can do is to think about to make a public policy in order to uh, keep the balance uh, between uh, the business application of AI and uh, also people's uh, social acceptance. What could users do, in your opinion, to promote a uh, safer use of technology? Yeah, but then maybe take the service, uh, autonomous service robots, for example. I think of, uh, users' responsibility in this side is relatively less comparing to uh, the, the current machines. Because you know that uh, the service robots, it, it should perform uh, its uh, kind of autonomy to suppose its task. So, um, so humans in, in the loops, uh, the, the situation of human in the loop is less comparing to today. So this is why I think that maybe uh, for, for the risk regulation towards uh, robots, Maybe we should more focus on the government's roles and or company's roles, but then, uh, not the users' roles. So it's just my personal opinion. Because they don't understand how the technology works. Yeah, it's, you know, that's for the service, maybe autonomous robots. So how it make the decision is like a block box to the users. So it, it might be difficult to ask them to afford the responsibility. Even, okay, they hold the robots inside their home. It could be just, uh, it could be solved by some maybe general uh, tort liability. Yeah, but I think we might need a more um, specific safety regulations to solve this kind of problems. In your opinion, what kind of skills do governments need to regulate technology? The skills, I think uh, maybe um, the first step is still to make the con help to make the consensus because you know AI is kind of emerging technology, and for emerging technology, um, it, it might have a it, it might have a serious de debate to whether to regulate it or not. Because uh, the, the problems, uh, its, it's risk haven't, has been not happened yet. So if you think, okay, we, we should regulate it, maybe a lot of people will say, oh, why? Why you should, you should waste of time doing this? But suppose you, you regulate this kind of technology, it might have another uh, concern is that maybe um, like what happens uh, uh, in the United Kingdom, 200 years ago, the, do you know the red flag law? It's a kind of, uh, uh, how should I say, it's a kind of conservative law that uh, becomes the obstacle for the development of an industry. So I, I, I mean that uh, you should be very, very uh, sensitive when you uh, think about this issue. So the first step is still to create the consensus.